Hello and welcome to another Algebra 2 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing Unit 6, Lesson 5 on Geometric Series. Now our last, last lesson, we introduced the idea of a series and we talked a lot about arithmetic series. Today we'll take a look at their counterpart, the geometric series. Let's get into it. Adding terms of a geometric sequence. Just as we can sum the terms of an arithmetic sequence to generate an arithmetic series, we can also sum the terms of a geometric sequence to generate a geometric series. So keep in mind, all a series is, is the sum of the terms or the elements of a sequence. So let's do that for a geometric series in exercise number one. Given a geometric series defined by the recursive formula a sub 1 equals a sub n, uh, sorry, a sub 1 equals 3 and a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 times 2, determine the value of s sub 5, which is the summation of i equals 1 to 5 of a sub i. Show the work that leads to your answer. All right, well, let's walk through this again and just make sure that you understand. Let's begin with this little thing, right? So here, s sub 5 which is the summation of i equals 1 to 5 of a sub i, right? Summation notation, which we looked at a few lessons ago, just says I need to start with i equals 1, then bump it up by 1, so to 2, then bump it up, bump it up, and bump it up. So in other words, all this summation is asking me to do is add up the first five terms of a sequence that is defined by the first element being 3 and then every element being the previous one times 2. All right? Now that's easy enough to do. We just have to figure out what all of these things are equal to. So we know a1 is equal to 3. We know a2 is going to be 3 times 2 and that's 6. We know a3 is going to be 6 times 2 and that's 12. A4 is going to be 12 times 2, and that's 24. And A5, which is the last one we need, is going to be 24 times 2, and that's 48. So now all this series is telling us to do is to take these five terms of the geometric sequence and add them all together, right? That's all this summation is asking us to do. The rest of this is really calculator work, right? We're just going to do 3 plus 6 plus 12 plus 24 plus 48. We won't even break our calculator out to do that. We'll just state the answer, which is 93. All right. And that's all a geometric series is, right? It is the sum of the terms or elements of a geometric sequence. A geometric sequence, of course, is a sequence that starts with some value and then every subsequent value is the previous one times some constant multiple. Okay. Let's go on to the geometric series formula. Now, an explicit formula for the sum of a finite number of geometric sequence terms is far less obvious than it was for an arithmetic series, but it can be developed. So remember, with an arithmetic series that we looked at in the last lesson, we simply paired the first and the last term, the second and the second to the last, the third and the third to the last, etc. All those sums were equal to each other, so we just had to figure out that one sum, figure out how many pairs we had, and bingo, we had the formula for an arithmetic series. A geometric series also has an explicit formula but it's much harder to get at, and yet we're gonna do it anyway. So let's take a look at exercise number two and develop the formula. Recall that for a geometric sequence, the nth term is given by a sub n equals a sub one times r to the n minus one, and that's really key, times r to the n minus one. From this, the general form of a geometric series is given below s sub n equals a1 plus a1 times r plus a1 times r squared plus all the way up to a1 times r to the n minus 1. And that parentheses is really important. Notice the final power of n minus 1. And again, I cannot emphasize this enough, right? 
So to develop this formula, right, we're adding the first term to the second term to the third term all the way to the nth term. And boy, it would be nice if the nth term was a sub 1 times r to the n. But as we looked at, both back in Algebra 1 and a few lessons ago, the nth term, the last term in a geometric, you know, sequence is the first term times the common ratio to the n minus 1. All right. All that being said, let's take a look at letter A. Write an expression below for the product of r and s sub n. All right, so let, let's do this together. Let's kind of like, we're going to walk through all this together. So I just want to take this mess and I want to multiply it all by r. Well, let's, let's write down kind of what that would look like. That'll be r times a1 plus a1r plus a1r squared plus dot 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 plus a1r to the n minus 2 plus a1r to the n minus 1. All right. Well, what's the point? Well, the point is, if I distributed the r through, right, if I just did this and did this and did this, what would happen, and I'm going to just move this down a little bit so I have a little bit more room here. We'll just do this. Hopefully that's going to be okay and nothing's going to go terribly wrong. There's lock. Lock that in place. Get out of it. All right. So think about what's going to happen here. When I distribute this through, I'm going to get a1 times r. That's going to be my first term. Then I'm going to get a1 times r squared and then a1 times r cubed. And really what's going to happen is it's going to look very similar to this. The only difference is every power of r is going to go up by 1 because I'm just multiplying by r to the first. And in fact, it's going to cascade all the way through until the last two terms are a1r to the n minus 1 plus a1 times r to the n. Now, if you're wondering, you know, why in the world am I multiplying my sum by r, that's very fair. And we're going to see that in just a bit, okay? So now, let's take a look at letter b. Find, in simplest form, the value of s sub n minus r times s sub n. All right, so again, I want to now take, literally, this thing, and I want to subtract this thing. All right, so what does that look like? Let's again kind of write this out. So S sub n, right, was just a1 plus, did that not lock? It didn't lock into place, and I want that locked. Lock in place, good. So a1 plus a1r plus a1r squared plus dot, 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 plus a1r to the n minus 1. That's my S sub n minus, now r times s sub n is going to be a1 times r plus a1 times r squared plus a1 times r cubed plus dot 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 plus a1 times r to the n minus 1 plus a1 times r to the n. Right? So that's it. Okay. Now please note, Whatever this expression is and whatever this expression is, whatever they're equal to, they have the same number of terms, right? Because all I've done is taken the original expression and multiplied everything by r. Now, of course, we could distribute the subtraction through and remove the parentheses, right? Let me just remove these parentheses. Let me distribute the subtraction through the parentheses, all right, so that all of this becomes a minus. Right? And now look what happens. Well, nothing combines with the a1, but here we have a1 times r, and here we have minus a1 times r. Those cancel. Here we have a1 times r squared, and we have negative a1 times r squared, and those cancel. The next one here would have been a1 times r cubed, and that would have canceled with a1 times r cubed, etc. And then this one, a1 times r to the n minus 1, will cancel with negative a1 r to the n minus 1. Everything has gone away except for a1 that's coming from s sub n, 
and minus a1r to the n. So all of this, s sub n minus r times s sub n, is just equal to a1 minus a1 times r to the n. You may remember something that we did um, a couple of lessons ago with summation notation where we had something called a telescoping series where a bunch of terms just kind of eliminated each other until we were basically left with the first term and the last term. So look at how much simpler this is. Now, letter C. Write both sides of the equation in B in their factored forms. Factored forms? What do we mean by that? Well, if I look at this side of the equation, I can see that there is an S sub n in both of them. So I'm going to write this as S sub n times 1 minus r. And in this particular side of the equation, I can see an a1 in both of those terms. So I'm going to write that as a1 times 1 minus r to the n. All right, now remember what I'm trying to do is get a formula for S sub n. Let's take a look at letter D. From the equation in part C, find a formula for S sub n in terms of a1, r, and n. Uh, this is a piece of cake now, because now all I have to do is take this formula, S sub n times 1 minus r, which is equal to a1 times 1 minus r to the n, and I just need to divide by 1 minus r. And there is my formula. The sum of a geometric series can always be found by taking the first term of the series, multiplying it by 1 minus the common ratio raised to the number of terms in the series, then divided by 1 minus the common ratio. <laughs> now, <laughs> That is a little bit trickier than what we saw in an arithmetic series where we just had to use some rainbow addition, right? <laughs> that one was a piece of cake. This one involves definitely an algebraic trick, right? Where we take this geometric sequence series up here. For some almost inexplicable reason, we multiply the whole thing by the common ratio. And then we take that minus that, which then makes almost every single one of the terms eliminate except for the first term and the last term. And then by doing a little bit of creative factoring, which I can't even see here, by doing a little creative factoring, it allows us to then solve for the summation. Now, I don't know that you'll ever be expected to reproduce that in any significant way. In fact, it's very likely that in any case when you have to do a geometric series problem, you'll have this formula sitting in front of you, all right? But part of the standards, the Common Core standards and the Next Generation standards say that you will see a development of the formula. So you know what? You just saw a development of the formula. <laughs> anyway. Let's keep moving on and actually let's use the formula. The value of a geometric series. Given a geometric sequence with n terms, a1, a2, dot, 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 all the way up to a n, then its series value, the summation of those terms, is given explicitly by s sub n equals a1 times the quantity 1 minus r to the n, all divided by 1 minus r. Or, in the numerator, if we don't factor the numerator, we could just look at it as a1 minus a1 times r to the n, all divided by 1 minus r. Personally, me personally, I actually like this form better than this form. But that's just me. Again, we could have gotten this form on that previous you know, slide if we hadn't factored the a1 out of this particular expression, but just factored the s sub n out of that like 1 minus r expression. Either way, let's take a look at how we can do one of these problems. Exercise number three. Which of the following represents the sum of a geometric series with eight terms, whose first term is three, and whose common ratio is four? Well, this is a very straightforward way of using this formula, but let me write down the formula again. S sub n equals a1 times 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. Now, in this particular um, problem, they have literally given me everything I need, right? So the first term is equal to 3. Let's fill that in. 
All right. Um, the common ratio is equal to four, and the number of terms is equal to eight. So we need to evaluate that. Three times one minus four to the eighth, all divided by one minus four. Now you could definitely do this in steps. You could figure out, ah, oh, the denominator is equal to negative three and the numerator is equal to blah and whatnot. I don't really see the point, you know, in getting any of that intermediate answer stuff. I'm just gonna like literally put in a fraction bar. I'm gonna take three, whoops. <laughs> Look at how easy it is. And then I can't manage to pull it off. I'm gonna just do three times one minus four raised to the eighth in the numerator. In the denominator, I'm just gonna have one minus four, enter, and there's my sum, right? So my first term times one minus my common ratio to the number of terms divided by one minus the common ratio, and that gives me 65,535, right there. By the way, notice how large that answer is, right? When the common ratio is a number greater than one, which it often is, then the value of geometric series end up typically to be quite, quite large, very large, all right? And that's because, plain fact is, they grow, the terms of the series slash sequence grow very quickly and grow very large when that ratio is bigger than one. If the ratio is smaller than one, between zero and one specifically, then the terms are decreasing exponentially and the sum won't be nearly as large. Anyway, let's keep playing around with these. All right, exercise number four. Determine the value of each of the following described geometric series using the formula above. And of course, instead of having the formula above, I've just continually written it on the side, but on your worksheet, it should be up above. So letter A, its first two terms are two and six, and there are 11 terms. Well, just kind of like when we worked with arithmetic series, you really wanna look at the formula, doesn't matter which one you work with, and you wanna say, what do we know and what do we not know, right? So right now, let me just uh, maybe change my color to red. All right, do I know the first term? Yes. Do I know the number of terms? Yes, right? Do I know the common ratio? Well, not off the top of my head, right? But they've given me enough information to figure out what R is, right? But the R is the only thing that is really missing in that first problem. But R is always the ratio of two consecutive terms. Since the first term is two and the second term is six, the common ratio is three, and now we have everything we need. So in fact, I can say now S11 is gonna be equal to my first term, two, times one minus my common ratio, which is three, raised to the number of terms, which is 11, all divided by one minus three. And then I'm gonna just put that in my calculator and figure out the answer. Why don't you go ahead and do that, figure out the answer, and then I'll just simply state what it is. All right, again, it tends to be very large because we've got three to the 11th up here, right? And that ends up being quite a large number. In fact, we end up having 177,146, quite big. Now, that was still a relatively straightforward problem. You know, the only thing that we were missing in terms of this formula was the value of R but that was also pretty easy to generate just based on the fact that the first term was two and the second term was equal to six. So let's keep going and look at some that maybe are a bit trickier. Letter B. The summation I equals zero to 11 of 4,608 times one half to the I. And notice it says careful on this. This one is particularly tricky, okay? Because, you know, again, we got this formula, right? What's R? R is easy, right? R is going to be one half. That one is very straightforward. Even A sub one seems like it's pretty straightforward here. The thing that might be the trickiest in this problem is the value of N. Because N is the number of terms. And it's so easy to look at this thing and think, oh, N is equal to 11. And it surely would be if the I down here 
started at the number one, but it doesn't. It starts at the number zero. So actually what you have here, right, like just kind of thinking about what this sum is, this sum is 4,608 times one half to the zero plus 4,608 times one half to the first plus dot dot dot, right, plus 4,608 times one half to the 11th, right? That, that's kind of what this thing would look like if I wrote it all the way out. So my first term is most certainly 4,608. That's my first term because 4,608 times one half to the zero, one half to the zero is equal to one. One times 4,608 is 4,608. But we have 12 terms here, not 11, right? We have these 11 plus this additional one. So n is equal to 12. And that can be exceptionally tricky. So make sure that when you're looking at something like this, you really slow down and kind of kind of think about it. All right, so what does this sum look like? And I'm gonna actually say sum of 12. Well, our first term, 4,608 times one minus one half to the 12th, all divided by one minus one half. Okay, now this might be a little bit tricky and maybe you would prefer to use 0.5 instead of one half. Either way, put that in your calculator and see what you get as the answer. Now it really is critical that if you don't use 0.5 and you use the fraction one half, that you've got that one half in parentheses. If you don't, you run the risk that not every part of that one half is gonna be raised to the 12th power due to order of operations. Either way, if you kinda of crank through all the numbers on here, it is a little bit messier than previous ones because of that one half, but we get 9,213.75. And again, very, very tricky because it is so tempting to look at it and go, oh yeah, there are 11 terms because the number up there is 11. And that certainly would be true if the i here started at one. Of course, if the i started at one, then this wouldn't be 4,608 for the first term. It would be 4,608 times one half. So it'd be 2,304 as your first term. So if you ever have any question, write, write out the series to be able to think about it. All right, let's keep going. Letter C. Six plus 12 plus 24 plus dot, 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 plus 768. All right, well again, let's think about it a little bit. Actually, what I'd like you to do right now is pause the video, really consider this problem. What do we have in this formula? What do we not have? Once you identify what you don't have, and that should be pretty obvious, see if you can think about a way of figuring out the missing piece. All right, well, let's go through it. Again, I think it's kind of helpful to like go red here. I know A1, right? A1 is equal to six. I know R, right? I know it there, I know it there. R is equal to two. Right? We're multiplying by two each time to get to the next term. What I don't know is I don't know what n is equal to. I actually don't know the number of terms in this series. Okay? Now I could maybe just sit there and go times two, 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 etc. to see how many times I have to multiply by two to get up to 768. That might be an extremely inefficient way of doing this problem. So similar to what we did when we worked with arithmetic series, I'm going to bring out the geometric sequence formula, the geometric sequence formula, right? That said, I can predict any term of a geometric sequence if I know the first term, the common ratio, and the number of terms. Now here's the key. I know what the last one is, I know what the first one is, I know what the common ratio is, that should allow me to solve for n, right? So I can now take this and go 768 is equal to six 
times, what do we have? 2 raised to the n minus 1. All right, I can divide both sides by 6. Okay, that is going to give me what? Um, 128. So I have 128 equals 2 to the n minus 1. Now remember, I'm trying to solve 4n, and I've actually got two nice choices right now. I could either use the method of common bases, or I could use a logarithm base 2, right? Either one is going to work nice. Actually, let me use the logarithm base 2, since we just worked with logarithms in our last unit, right? If I take the log base 2 of both sides, log base 2 of 2 to the n minus 1, then I'll get these two to cancel. n minus 1 will be the log base 2 of 128. So ooh, doop, up here, n will be the log base 2 of 128 plus 1. And of course, I can just sort of take my calculator and go, what is the log base 2 of 128? and then add 1 to it, and that means I've got 8 terms. We could also do that by using the method of common bases, but we did that la less in the last unit than, than using logarithms. Actually, we didn't even do it in the last unit. We did it two units ago in our exponential unit. Believe it or not, we're not actually done with the problem yet, right? That, we did all of that simply to find out the number of terms we had, now that we've got n equals 8, we can now say that our sum is going to be our first term, which is 6, times 1 minus 2 raised to the 8, all divided by 1 minus 2. But think about that, right? We had to really like use this geometric sequence formula simply to figure out the number of terms. And that actually took a little bit of work. Now we can crank that into our calculator. We'll just do that without kind of going through it, and we'll get 1,530. That's it. All right, let's take a look at one more of these problems. Letter D. The first term is 80. The last term is 911.25, and there are seven terms. All right, I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can figure this out. Well, let's take a look. We know our first term, A1. We know the number of terms, that's 7. But what we don't know is R. We don't know the common ratio. And just like in part C, what we're going to do is we're going to use the following formula. A sub n equals A sub 1 times R to the n minus 1 to figure out what R is. Right before, we used this to figure out what n is. So now I'm going to put 911.25 in for a sub n. I'm going to put 80 in for a1. Uh, I don't know what r is, and I know there are seven terms, so I'm going to do 7 minus 1 up there. So let me simplify this a little bit. 911.25 equals 80 times r to the sixth. I need to solve now for r, so I'm going to divide both sides by 80. All right, I'm not going to even care what that ratio is, but now I'm going to raise both of these sides to the 1 sixth or find the sixth root. All right, that is certainly something I want my calculator for. Right, so I am going to simply take a parenthesis out, put in a fraction. I've got 911.25 divided by 80 all raised to the 1 sixth, and that gives me, <laughs> I was going to say, it gives me a ratio of 1. That would have been weird. It gives me a ratio of 1.5, right? That is my common ratio. R equals 1.5. All right, so R equals 1.5, and we often, in these types of problems, just like in the arithmetic series problems, we have to use a combination of the geometric series formula and the geometric sequence formula. It is what it is. But now we've got all parts of that formula. We can just sort of plug and chug. S sub 7 is going to be A1, which is 80, 
times 1 minus 1.5 all raised to the seventh divided by 1 minus 1.5. Anytime the R value ends up being a decimal, it can get to be uh, pretty ugly. And that ends up being 2,573.75. All right. Not so bad. Let's do a couple more. Actually, let me go back. Yeah. Nope. That's good. Okay. So, exercise number five. A person places one penny in a piggy bank on the first day of the month, two pennies on the second day, four pennies on the third day, and so on. Show that this person will be a multimillionaire at the end of a 31-day 30 30 month. Show the calculations that lead to your answer. All right, this is cool, right? So now, one thing that I want to be very aware of, right, is that a penny is worth $0.01, right? So what I'm really summing here, right, the S sub 31 is going to be 0 0.01 plus 0 0.02 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.08 plus dot, dot, dot. All right. My real question is, really? That's going to get me to be a multimillionaire? Well, pause the video now and see if you can use this formula to find out how much this person has in their piggy bank at the end of the month. Well, it's kind of cool, right? We know everything. We know that a sub 1 is 0 0.01. We know r is equal to 2, and we know n is equal to 31. So it's actually pretty easy, right? This isn't like one of those previous problems where I'm like, oh, I gotta figure out what N is or what, I, what R is or whatever. I don't need to do any of that. I just need to figure out what this sum is. 0 0.01 times one minus two to the 31st, all divided by one minus two. So let's actually break out the calculator. Let's put this thing in, because I, I always get a kick out of this. I'm just gonna really quickly do Menu, action, clear history. All right, so, right, we've got that $0.01 times one minus our common ratio raised to how many terms there are, there are 31 terms, okay, divided by one minus two. And after 31 days, we have 21 million, $474,836.47 in our bank account, or in our piggy bank, which quite frankly, I'm betting we can't actually fit that much money in a piggy bank, but let's just pretend this is an infinitely large piggy bank, right? That's a huge quantity of money. And definitely, the person's a multimillionaire, right? So the person now has, 21,474,836.47. Now, don't get me wrong, I mean, they're putting in a lot of money on like the 30th day and the 31st day. In fact, most of the money, most of the money in the piggy bank is coming on the last few days, right? But we're getting so much because each time we're doubling, I mean, you know, on the, on the fourth day, we're only putting eight cents in. And on the fifth day, we're putting 16 cents in. And the sixth day, 32 cents. But eventually, you know, once we get up into that like $10 and then 20 and then 40 and then 80, you know, then we really start to cook. All right. So let's take a look at letter B. What is the first day on which the total amount saved exceeds $1 million? Justify or explain how you found your answer, algebraic, graphically, with a table, etc. All right. Well, look, any of those approaches are going to work. What I'd like you to do is play around with this problem and see if you can figure out the first day on which the amount of money that's saved ends up exceeding $1 million. All right. Well, you know, we can really look at it. You know, we've got S sub n, this is really a function of n, is 0 0.01 times 1 minus 1.5 plus 0 0.04 plus 0 0.08 plus dot, 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 
times one minus two to the n, all divided by one minus two, right? That expression is telling us how much we've saved as a function of the number of days we've been saving, right? Let's we'll just kind of like experiment with this a little bit. We know it when n is 31, we're at like 27 million. All right, so that, that's a lot. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna add a graph, all right? And I know it says f1 of x, but whatever. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna just put it in like this. So we're gonna have 0 0.01, whoops, nope. That's just 0 0.01 times one minus two raised to the x divided by one minus two. And yeah, I know we could simplify the, the one minus two into negative one. We could even simplify the 0 0.01 divided by one minus two, all of that. We could do it all. But I'm just gonna hit enter. Now, by the way, look at this exponentially increasing curve, right? That thing is huge. Now again, it really should be just n equals one, n equals two, n equals three, et cetera. Let's take a look at a table right now. So if I hit control T and I look at a table, in the column here, right, we can actually see the total amount saved. And we can see how quickly it's growing, right? After let's say 20 days, just, just, just nailing it at 20 days, we've already saved $10,485.75. Now we're looking for it to exceed $1 million. By the way, 1 million is one times 10 to the sixth. All right, one times 10 to the sixth. So let's kind of keep looking, right? Now the numbers start to get very large, right? And in fact, what I can see is that after 26 days, after 26 days, the amount saved is $671,000 and, well, $671,088. So I'm getting very close there. And as soon as I go to the 27th day, I'm at $1,342,177. All right, so, the table to me is a fantastic way of, say, of doing this problem. When n is equal to 26, s sub 26 is equal to, uh, let me just go up for a second here. Of course, I'm not gonna have enough room on the screen now. That should do it. 671.88. And I'll leave off the sense there. And then when n is equal to 27, S27 is equal to 1,342,000. All right, and so since I'm looking for the first day when the amount that I've, I've saved is greater than a million, the first day would be the 27th day. Now, think about that, by the way. Consider the fact that after 27 days, you've saved just a little bit over a million dollars. Well, maybe not just a little over, but you know, a bit over a million dollars. And yet, four days later, we're up to 21 million. And that's all about the power of doubling, right? Because the next day, we're gonna double the previous, you know, the day after that, we're gonna double etc. We're not doubling what we've saved, we're just doubling what we've deposited. But that's still a lot of money. All right, let's wrap this up. It's kind of like a little fun problem there with how quickly geometric series values can grow. So today we looked at geometric series and they're a simple idea. They are the sum of the terms of a geometric sequence. Right at its base level, that is very easy. Now unlike arithmetic series, Geometric series have a formula, an explicit formula for calculating them, that's actually a little bit complicated, especially to derive, to come up with the formula, right? And it's not as easy as when we were doing arithmetic series and I was just like, hey man, look at the sum of the first and the last times how many pairs there are, there's our formula. Like, this one's way more complicated. The first term times one minus r to the n, all divided by one minus r. And I would suggest that you go back and make sure you understand the algebra of how that formula was derived, cause you never know kind of thing, right? But most important is being able to use that formula. Sometimes using the formula is straightforward. You know what the first term is, you know what the common ratio is, you know what the number of terms are. 
Many times though, you don't know all the pieces of that information and you have to actually use the geometric sequence formula to figure out one of the missing pieces. So be ready, make sure to have both those formulas sitting beside you when you work on this lesson's homework. For now, I just wanna thank you for joining me for another Algebra 2 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and until I see you again, keep thinking and keep solving problems.